Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This is the Almira 2 from Neutral Labs. It's an instrument that I've really been enjoying recently, and I've posted a number of performances with it on the channel, both um, solo and also paired with other instruments as well. However, seeing as it is a somewhat unusual and dare I say esoteric instrument that is made up of sort of non-traditional parts arranged in a maybe non-traditional way in terms of a sort of standard synthesizers I thought it might be useful for people that are um, interested in the synth to see what it's like to work with going from what goes for uh, an initialized patch up to something along the lines of the uh, performances that I have been posting. However, before we get to that, let's get the YouTuber transparency stuff out of the way. Um, uh, Neutral Labs contacted me off the back of some other videos that I'd posted to ask whether I'd be interested in featuring the Elmira 2 on the channel. I thought it was an interesting looking and sounding instrument, so I said yes. Uh, so they sent one of them to me for free to feature on the channel. Um, they have not asked for any editorial oversight for anything that I've done. They haven't asked for any particular type of video to be made. Uh, and as always, I just don't feature stuff on the channel that I don't think is going to be interesting, at least interesting to me, uh, and that I don't think is good. So uh, apply whatever pinch of salt that you need to apply um, to this video. Uh, but uh, hopefully the sounds, um, if you're into those sorts of sounds, will speak for themselves. Before we start making any music, it's probably worth just quickly talking about the sort of architecture of the synth, because as I say, it's not a, a normal layout uh, necessarily. Um, so you, you can probably see that it is a um, semi-modular synth. We have patch points here, but there is a um, pre-patched way that everything is arranged. So it's built around four voices, which are accessible by these touch plates here. Uh, or by uh, a gate input, which we might get to uh, later on. Uh, each of these voices is a, uh, a wavetable digital voice, and we can scan the wavetable and change wave, wavetables as well. And there are uh, four wavetables um, currently in Elmira. On top of the... Um, the wavetable scanning, we also have this mod which modifies the um, the digital waveform in some way. Um, there are a bunch of different uh, mod modes and you can apply them to each voice individually. But as an example, it, the default is a detune. So this adds like a detuned second oscillator. So you can kind of get that sort of rich stuff that's going on in, in there um, out of one uh, single voice. Uh, the envelopes are not snappy. Um, this is as snappy as they get. Uh, and as you turn, sorry, not quite as snappy as they get. Uh, and as you turn up this envelope control, it's going to increase the attack and the release at the same time. And at the longest, kind of goes on for, for quite a while there. You can also set any of the voices to drone. Uh, at which point the envelope doesn't do anything anymore. However, uh, that envelope signal is available here per voice for you to patch into other things if you like. All of those four voices are mixed together and they then go through um, three other sort of um, processes, if you like. Uh, the first is a delay, uh, which I'll just turn up the mix here so you can hear it. Kind of a grungy lo-fi delay. Got a bit of uh, a low pass going on there in the, uh, in the feedback loop. And if we take it to its uh, longest time, it goes very long. And also kind of gets grungier as well. You start hearing some of that digital grit happening in there as well. The clock noise getting in there, which, you know, if that's the sort of thing you're into, which I am, that's all good. And uh, the feedback does go into rolling feedback. And we can get. 
there's some noise happening there as well. You might be able to hear that things are getting clipped there. Uh, there's a reason for that, which we'll get to in a second. Um, the next thing we have is a filter. Uh, so the, the filter comes after the delay. So there's our filter there, uh, and the resonance is here. Both the cutoff and the resonance are modulatable as well, which is fun. Uh, there are different um, filter modes that you can access through some of the secret key press menus. Uh, we'll probably just leave it on the low pass uh, for today, however. Uh, finally, uh, after it's gone through the filter, it's going to go through the uh, distortion, uh, <laughs> distortion st stage, which is named Ouch. Uh, and this can get really, really extreme. So um, I'll leave Choke up at full uh, just for a second. Uh, but in terms of the actual distortion, it's the bite control, which is going to turn it up. So it's pretty extreme. You probably hear there's some almost like sounds like wave folding kind of stuff happening in there where we're getting a lot of upper harmonics uh, generated. Uh, the choke control, I'm not entirely sure what it does. Uh, technically speaking, I think it's probably limiting the voltage of the um, distortion, uh, but you can hear that it has. Sorry if I turn the bytes up. kind of a limiting effect on the distortion circuit there um uh you can kind of use it almost like a like a vca for the um distortion if you want to there are some interesting things you can do with modulating it again both those things are modulatable um finally on the distortion we won't be getting into this today i don't think uh, you actually have these patch points here where you can um literally patch components into the distortion circuit to change how it works and uh it comes with some of these little cards here which have components pre-soldered to the back for each of those pins so you can actually plug uh, these in to change the sound of the distortion um, or you can literally literally get um, through hole components and, and, and stick them in there um, as I say probably not going to do that uh, today uh, but that is something that is available on the synth so next up we have some LFOs um, uh, so the first LFO, LFO1, I guess, uh, just has a speed control and gives you a triangle. Uh, the second LFO has a bunch of different uh, shapes that are accessible on the wave control here, which is modulatable, which is very, very fun. Uh, and uh, again, we have the speed, the frequency here as well. Uh, speed is modulatable on both of them as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, we also have a sequencer here, which is a pitch sequencer, which is per voice and each voice can have a different length in terms of its sequencer length however it is just a pitch sequencer it doesn't output gates uh, so you're going to have to gate things separately uh, if that's what you uh, are looking to do uh, although to approach this like a traditional synth is probably not the, the way to approach it and then finally uh, we just have a couple of utilities here so we have an adder here uh, where you can take two different uh, sources and add them together with differing amounts. We've got attenuators for each of the inputs. And then we have an attenuating uh, multiple here where you can take one uh, source and mult it out to two different outputs and then attenuate each of those two outputs. So all sort of sensible stuff just to allow um, uh, patching to be a bit more uh, robust. Of course, you can also introduce other modulation sources from modular, uh, from Eurac, from other semi-modular synths. Um, it will take uh, Eurac voltage, but it will clip it at some point. So it doesn't go all the way up to the kind of plus five, minus five. I think it's at three volts clipping, which is kind of common on some of these semi-modular synths, especially the less usual ones i think uh, soft pop for example has the the same limitation in terms of clipping the cv i have also just off to the side here got a reverb pad i've got the gfi specular reverb so that's dry and that's with it engaged i might tweak the the settings as well uh, so it is a mono unit mono as in not stereo it is polyphonic um but yeah, it's just a, a nice thing to be able to add a bit of stereo width to any sort of mono device. So let's get going uh, with uh, some sound. 
So uh, I'm going to start at the low end and maybe we'll just get this droning um, to begin with. So each of the oscillators are completely freely tunable. Um, so you can go for microtonal things. You can turn on a chromatic mode, which allows you to clip to um, a, a, a tempered uh, scale. But um, for me, I prefer to, to be a little bit uh, freer with the instruments of this type. So as I mentioned, we've got this mod control here, which allows us to mod uh, modify, I should say, the wavetables. We have a bunch of different modes here. Some of them do kind of distortion, some of them do filtering. Um, so let's maybe find something other than the... Actually, maybe... Perhaps we will just leave that one with the detune, because that's quite nice. Uh, and we also have... Our wavetable that we can scan here. And perhaps we'll get some modulation going on there. So we'll just patch that in. Uh, actually, we'll go. No, we'll just yeah, we'll just go straight out of LFO one and go into the wave input here. Maybe we'll add a little bit of uh, delay to the mix to get some character in there as well. It's a nice place to start. Okay, let's find some sounds on the other voices. So one of the things I like doing on uh, Elmira is one of the uh, wavetable modifiers allows you to get noise, which is always a lovely thing to bring into a drone because it brings some of that crispy crackle at the top. So if we want to change uh, the mod modes, we hold down the uh, selector button for that particular uh, voice, and then we click through on the mod, and I want the white mode, which I know to be noise, so we'll just click through until we get to the white mode there. If we just turn off that drone just for a second. Just still sat in the... There we go. Uh, we can now also use that voice as a um, noise source, which uh, if we pair it with the... the first voice. And especially if we bring up the resonance of the filter, which holds onto the bottom end fairly well, even when you push it high. now we've got that noise source in there that we can introduce. We probably don't want it happening all the time. That's probably something we want to modulate a little bit. Um, so perhaps we'll make use of the second LFO here. Now the waveforms um, 
are pretty interesting in LFO2. At the lowest setting on the WAV or wave control, we have um, kind of an exponential sawtooth. Uh, so maybe we'll take that and put it into our multiple here because we might want to send it to a couple of different places. So perhaps we'll not have that going at the same rate the whole time. So we can, um, let's take the other LFO. We'll just use a stack cable and go, and go into the frequency control here. You can see there on the light. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Maybe we could a little bit more mix on the reverb, on the delay rather. Okay, let's have a think about some of these other voices we've got here then. down the delay for a second so we can hear okay I'll turn up the envelope here so I, when I start my noise it just sort of fade out naturally. Okay, kind of a gross uh, note at the moment, but sometimes you need a gross note. Let's try some of the other wavetables. Wave table's a little bit more mellow. Just disable our main drone for a second. Yeah, cool, okay. Uh, let's um, think about how we're gonna mod this one, because I don't think we want necessarily the um, the uh the detune here so let's try some of the other modes here so we've got a sub octave here that sounds kind of evil turn that delay down for a second probably not right for this though so we've got kind of a saturator that might be fun. Let's see what else we've got. So a straight up distortion kind of thing. Bit crusher. Well, that's probably sample rate reduction. That might be fun because you've kind of got those different harmonics which naturally start to pop out there. Um, yeah, so let's maybe have that going on and maybe have that modulated by... Oh, we can modulate that using its own envelope, perhaps. So let's um, go from our envelope output for that voice into the mod 
input here, turn the mod up a bit, make the envelope longer. of cool interactions in there i want to maybe modulate the wave as well um i'm kind of using a lot of the lfo at this point this first lfo so let's put that into the mold i've already got something into the multiple uh i can just go off the other side of the stack cable for that kind of that'll do uh so that was going into the wave i want to also to go into the wave on this one as well there we go. And maybe we'll also sequence the um, pitch of this one. So we'll have a look at how the sequencer works. So I'll just start my drone going again so I know what I'm sort of no time sequencing against. And the uh, and I'll also get this drone in just to make it easier to do the sequencer. So the way that we do the sequencer is we um, hold down the selector for this voice and press record, and that starts the sequencer recording. And then each time we want to record a step. We just sort of tune this knob and hit the record button. So uh, let's start with this slightly ugly note. That also ugly note. Less ugly notes. That ugly note. And that less ugly note. And then we'll go to play to start that sequence of going and we just need to give a sync a sync signal to the sequencer uh, to get that going uh, and we can just tap that in and I'm just going to give something that's slow Now, this sequencer is going to run independently of the um, the gate signal, so I can sort of start a note going. And it will kind of continue playing that sequencer in the background. back in. And now that because we have that delay happening in there, that's kind of beating against the each note in this sequence.
Now we can actually tempo sync the delay uh, as well so that it's moving at a division rate of the sequencer. But I kind of like the free flowing nature of it at the moment. And perhaps we'll set up another sequence over here, so let's find a sound over on this last voice. So I'll just bring that um, delay down just to make it easier to tune again. And perhaps we'll have a descending sequence on that one instead. What should we do for the mod on this one? Let's try a couple of different ones out. So that's your sample rate reduction, I think. That's our noise. So you also have a non-resonant low and high pass that you can set up. And you can kind of use that to gate things out as well. So we can maybe use... Okay, let's maybe use the low pass to add an additional character to when we sweep in the envelope. So we'll patch envelope into mod again. So they can hear we're not just getting a volume increase. We've kind of got a uh, filter sweeping there, which kind of gives you that low pass filter kind of vibe. Uh, so I'm just going to stop the sequence and we'll get another sequence going on in here. So set it into record mode. We'll start with this note at the top here. So we'll go for a longer sequence there, um, because the sequences can be different lengths for each uh, voice here. There's some interesting discordances in there. They resolve nicely <laughs> until they don't. Interesting. Okay, we just need to be a bit ju judicious about how, how often we're having both of those happening at once. But never mind. A little bit of discordance is, is a nice thing. hear that it's sort of naturally dirty at all times. That's kind of nothing you can you can do to move away from that because it's always running through that distortion, even with the distortion turned all the way down. There is a headroom setting if you want to have it Now, 
with the filter turned down low, we're kind of losing some of that um, noise stuff that we had going on before. So what we could do is maybe um, patch the, just need a short one for that, we could maybe patch the envelope of that one into the cutoff of the filter. Now this voice, when we trigger it, is going to open up that filter for us. And similarly, because we have this voice droning, perhaps we can have its envelope used to modulate something. How about um, maybe the resonance? envelope shape still applies. Or maybe the feedback. Oh, that's menacing. Yeah, I like that. So we don't just need to, we don't just have these as triggers, we can use these as performance controls for other things as well. Now we can try and make things a bit dirtier and see what we can do. Let me add some reverb now. Oh, here we go. Yeah, is that distortion? Let me try choking it a little bit. Try a different, um, f different wave shape on that noise. Now there are a bunch of sort of hidden settings for things like uh, portamento for synchronization uh, for different um, tempered scales that you can access by holding down the mod button and tapping in codes 
uh, like one, one, three, four, something like that across the selector buttons. Um, so there's a bunch of other deep stuff that you can do to affect things. Um, actually, I guess one thing we could try is we could try um, tempo syncing the delay, because then you can get some quite interesting pitch shift things happening. So let's um, let's give that a little go, perhaps. So the code for tempo syncing is 132. So we'll hold down mod and go 1, 3, 2. And you heard there that the delay just snapped in its time. And now if we modulate the time, it will snap to um, divisions of the sequencer. So you can get these. pitch shifting. Might be cool if we increase the uh, feedback as well. So that's one of the things that we can sort of adjust on here. Uh, what else could we do? Oh, well, we could add um, portamento, some little slur uh, to the sequence notes. So we could do, uh, so the code for that is two, two, three. You can hear now that those notes are slurred instead of stepped. That's quite nice. Really hear that sort of more sort of interesting waveform shape there. Anyway, I hope this has given you a flavour for what it's like to work with the Almira. Um, it is a synth which is opinionated in terms of the way that it wants you to interact with it. Um, and like a lot of esoteric synths, um, it's a synth that you will choose for that character, not just its sound character, but its, its workflow character. And you know, if it doesn't suit you, then you know, you're probably not going to enjoy using it, frankly. But if you're into being forced to approach an instrument in a different way, then uh, you might find that you do indeed enjoy using it, as I do. But if you want something that's going to do 303 bass lines, then there are lots of other synths out there which will do it a lot better than this. You can kind of hack this to make it do it with some of the, the low pass filter uh, mod stuff, but it's probably missing the point a little bit. Anyway, uh, until next time, Drone on. Take care. Bye-bye.